And uh, just want to let you know, everyone, I think we can go ahead and start uh, getting the meeting going. Um, good morning. My name is David Lopez. I'm a supervising air quality specialist here at the uh, Valley Air District. Uh, we are excited today to talk about our two newest RFPs, our uh, urban greening and vegetative barriers projects. Um, before I start the presentation, uh, we will be offering uh, interpretation services. So uh, does Linguistica want to provide uh, their instructions? Yes, of course. Hola, muy buenos días a todos. Esta junta tendrá interpretación simultánea en el lenguaje de español. Para poder acceder a la interpretación, si usted está utilizando una computadora, buscará el icono de un mundo que aparece abajo de su pantalla. Después seleccionará español y los invito a silenciar el audio original. Si usted está utilizando una tableta o teléfono, el proceso es diferente. Buscarán los tres puntos que aparecen en su pantalla. Después seleccionarán interpretación de lenguajes. Después seleccionarán español, una vez más silenciar el audio original y cuando han acabado arriba de su pantalla habrá un botón que dice listo o done en inglés. Seleccionenlo para de esa manera poder escuchar en español. Muchas gracias. Dave, I'll go ahead and give the corresponding um, just instructions in English. And, and so once um, the interpretation has started, you'll see a little globe icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, and you'll go ahead and click into the English channel if you speak English, um, and you will not click mute original audio. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start the interpretation. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anything else I need to do for uh, housekeeping? All right. Thank you. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Once again, my name is David Lopez uh, with the Valley Air District, and today we're here to talk to you about our two new uh, RFPs, our Urban Greening and Vegetative Barriers RFPs. Um, we uh, want to say thank you for everyone for making the time to attend these. These are just an informational meeting, um, just to kind of go over the RFP and then answer any questions that uh, potential applicants or the public may have. Uh, we ask that you um, answer, wait till the very end of our presentation to, get answer, uh, to ask any questions, and we will do our best to answer it. If we cannot, we will then follow up with um, at, at, in a later date to you know provide answers when we get, if we need to get clarification. So, but with that, we thank you everybody. Um, so just a little feedback, the urban greening and vegetative barriers programs are separate programs. And these are two community identified programs that our local AB 617 group has identified as something that they would like to have in uh, their community. Um, these programs are guided by shared experience and knowledge from the local members. And through their input and involvement through the steering committees and subcommittees, we have uh, you know, selected these two programs. Currently, the, the, goal, I'm sorry, the goal of this RFP, uh, these two RFPs, is to find a local eligible entity who can apply for these funds and then implement programs here in the South Central Fresno AB617 community. Um, the goal of this program is to work with the community to reduce exposure to these emissions and provide several key benefits. A little background, the AB 617 ruling requires that CARB and air districts to develop and implement additional plans and measures to reduce air, and particularly in exposure to in disadvantaged communities. The urban greening and vegetative barrier emission reduction programs are part of the California Climate Investments, which is a statewide initiative that puts billions of dollars through crop and trade dollars and working and reducing greenhouse gases, strengthening the economy and improving public health and environment in particularly disadvantaged communities. Some more background, some of the key benefits of urban greening and vegetative barrier programs is that they reduce the impacts of climate change, protects local air quality by reducing harmful pollutants, reduces emissions from energy demand due to cooling of houses, reduces topsoil runoff that protects local waterways and prevents water pollution, absorbs dust and wind and sound while providing a natural view, and lastly, it can also reduce exposure to air pollution due to interception of particles. Both programs in terms of funding will receive up to a million dollars for each program. And the applicants must be in compliance with all state and federal regulations and rules. Uh, disclosure of any additional funding sources we will, are requested to have. And if you do have additional funding or don't, it does not preclude participation. Funds may be leveraged to expand certain projects. And then of course, match funding for this program is not required. Contract period. So everybody who applies and is, if they are awarded, would receive a project for 10 years. And this would include planting of trees or vegetative barriers within the first three years of that 10 year contract. <coughs> and then 
Um, during the 10 year period, the applicant or the awardee, I'm sorry, would be uh, responsible to maintain the project, comply with local requirements, and of course, make projects available for inspection. In terms of eligible applicants, the, uh, for these programs, they can be a joint powers authority or JPA, be a special district, nonprofit, tribal government, um, public agencies, however, must apply with a local community based group that is either located in the community or operates in the community uh, to be eligible. Um, the, also, the applicant either has to be the property owner or must have documented authority to, um, to, to build on the, the site where they're located, they're looking to do the project, I'm sorry, as well as, um, or it can have a plan describing it to get the authority. Um, it's sure, you must also ensure that additional funds are available to carry out the project, um, you know, that the, the local land that you're working on has all of its taxes up to date. Um, if CEQA is involved or required, you must inform to do that. And then, like I said, you must commit to a 10 year contract to make available for inspection. And basically you'll be uh, required to make sure the implementation of the trees and vegetable barriers meets our program guidelines. Eligible projects must be located within the AB 617 community boundaries and the types of plants or trees that will be planted for these programs must be non-invasive, non-poisonous, uh, must conform to roadway safety and, and maximize greenhouse gas reductions must be low uh, BOVC emitting, and then also must minimize uh, allergenic pollen. So in terms of eligible projects, they must be, uh, fundings can be up to 100% of eligible costs. Uh, you must be able, we do pay for, I'm sorry, uh, supplies and materials, maintenance, uh, labor and construction, contract of services. For non-construction costs, such as outreach and planning, uh, we provide up to 25%. Uh, we do allow up to 10% for contingency costs, as well as signs, interpretive aids, and, and other forms of communication. Ineligible costs is, would be overhead. That is our, currently our only ineligible item. Uh, project evaluation process. Um, I'm gonna let actually turn this over to, um, to Catherine Tao. She's a senior air quality specialist uh, here in our grants department to talk about kind of the program process. Thank you, David. In the next couple of slides, I will be going over the project evaluation process and what we will be looking for in an application packet. The applications that are received by the district prior to the deadline will be evaluated and scored by the district and the South Central Fresno Community Steering Committee. We plan to conduct a meeting with the CSC to go over the proposals and rank them based on the scoring criteria, which I will briefly go over in the next slide. Once a selection has been made, all of the applicants will be notified and the district will issue a contract to the selected applicants. The table on the next slide shows the scoring criteria with the maximum points available for each category. We will be scoring each of the proposals based on exposure benefits, which has the highest points available as it is important to the South Central Fresno CSC cost effectiveness, co-benefits, species selections, project readiness, and community, community engagement. In the next two slides, I will go over the project implementation plan, which is required with the application. For both the urban greening and vegetative barriers program, applicants must include a supplemental document that describes how projects benefits those in most need within the AB 617 community. Their proposed com community engagement within the AB 617 community, which should include strategies such as workshops, events, and social marketing, key partners and their roles for the outreach, as well as their project website and materials. We will also be looking for applicants that can provide non-English language interactions and materials. Other items will include identifying the type of trees or vegetative barriers, as well as how the trees or vegetative barriers will be planted, the historical relationships with each of the partners that will be involved, the budget and how the funds will be allocated to each of the partners. The next slide shows additional required information for each of the programs. For urban greening, applicants that plan to distribute trees to individuals must, must describe the general process for residents to obtain a tree, 
the application process and requirements for applicants to apply for and receive a tree, and the criteria for the type of individuals that can apply, which is subject to approval by the district and the CSE. Applicants that are applying for locations at public spaces, such as parks, schools, and non-residential properties must identify the locations for the district and CSE approval prior to project implementation. For vegetative barriers, applicants must describe the process of working with the community and other entities to identify areas for vegetative barriers. Similar to the urban, urban greening project, applicants that are applying for locations uh, at all locations uh, must identify the location for district and the CSC approval prior to project implementation. For the emissions reductions uh, section, uh, I'm gonna uh, wait a few seconds here. Uh, Stephanie's going to drop in the link to uh, these calculator tool uh, for the applicants. Uh, we have the user guides in exhibit B uh, for the RFP, uh, which is part of the cost effectiveness analysis, and it is an established tools uh, which the district has provided to help with this process. Um, it provides a step-by-step -step guidance for the applicants uh, to determine the emissions reductions and the calculations. Um, applicants would be using the CNRA draft urban greening benefits calculator tools uh, to provide the results from the GHG tabs and code benefits summaries tab. Uh, this calculator tools will use three external tools, the iTree Planting Tools 9, um, another tool from the University of California Agricultural and Natural Resources Water Use, um, and finally the California Department of Water Resources tool. So there will be three tools that will be used to determine uh, the GHG summary tab and the co-benefits summary. In the next slide, I'll quickly go over uh, what is required for a complete application packet checklist. This is identified on page 11 of the RFP, which will include the application, the project implementation plan, the certifications form, form W9, the results from the calculator tool, the quotes, the aerial map, photographs, and the supplemental questions and responses. On the next slide, this is part of the application, is on section three, uh, starting on page two. Uh, there are several items that we will be uh, looking for, uh, for completeness into the application, uh, and these will be used uh, as part of the scoring criteria as well. Um, applicants may submit the answers uh, to the section on the separate documents as well, so long as the proposals answer each question in the order presented and the response are numbered accordingly. Uh, they do include the select project type, the project summary, the location of the project, uh, in addition to a few other items. And the next slide is a uh, brief summary of the program process uh, once an an applicant has been selected. Um, we'll look at these completed applications. The district uh, and the CSC will review each of the applications for completeness and discuss uh, um, and come up to a consensus. We'll offer a contract to the uh, applicants. And uh, once that's completed, we'll implement the project and go through the reimbursement project uh, uh, along with the project maintenance. On the next slide is our schedule. Uh, we, we as I mentioned, we released the proposal on June 20th. The, the uh, solicitation will close on August 4th at 5 p.m. And uh, once that's uh, completed, uh, we will uh, allow approximately 90 days to review and select uh, an applicant uh, for this for both of these projects. Um, it could be sooner, uh, but we provide 90 days just to give us enough time uh, for any uh, additional uh, reviews. Under the RFP submittal and contact information slide, uh, you can contact David Lopez, our supervising air quality specialist that's overseeing this pro these two programs. Um, the proposals can also be submitted uh, to, uh, to the district at grants.valleyair.org 
under the subject line, depending on what you are applying for, uh, please put Fresno Urban Greening application or the Fresno Vegetative Barrier application uh, in the subject line. And at this time, uh, we'll go ahead and open the floor up for any comments and questions. And Stephanie and David, um, we'll, if you would like to help uh, facilitate this. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Is there any questions so far? Feel free to, I think we're a small group. I think we can go ahead and just uh, start talking, so. Uh, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, you mentioned that one of the things that you would be looking at was the criteria for individuals who would be receiving a tree. So <clears throat> imagine you're giving a tree giveaway, you're, you're planning a tree giveaway project and there were several criteria. One of them was the criteria for individuals who might receive a tree. Could you talk a little bit more about what that means, how they, how, what, yeah, that, that seems that's an interesting thing that I haven't come across before. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Yeah, so um, that section is really for the applicants to uh, give us an idea of what they would be looking for for the individuals that would be eligible to apply uh, for the tree. These would most likely be the um, residents in the 8617 um, South Central Fresno community area um, and where they're located. Um, it, it's, because we're looking at individuals and residents, um, it may um, potentially exclude any businesses, but this, this is something that we would be looking at uh, what the applicants, uh, what, the, um, what the legal entity would be uh, uh, looking at to get the applicants to apply. So, but is there something that, so I clearly, the residency within that specific area is an important one, but were there other criteria that you would like to see people um, chosen on the basis of? Um, just the general criteria. I think we're actually, when we, um, we're kind of leaving it open-ended for the applicants to kind of share with us. Um, we're, we are obviously not experts um, in this field. That's, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing this uh, this grant and, and soliciting uh, an entity to do this. Um, you know, we do obviously, obviously being in the AB61 communities is, is a requirement, but um, if there's other ways you think that would be the best um, to get to, do, you know, to do, uh, to limit or to maybe um, make sure that the, the necessary people get it, uh, we're going to allow that the applicant to kind of provide that info. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, any other questions? I, I have a question. Uh, this is Mona at Tree Fresno. Regarding the long-term maintenance and care and sort of the accessibility, that's probably my biggest question for this particular grant, which is a little out of the ordinary for 10 years, um, because the grant itself is supposed to be implemented over a much shorter period of time. So um, I'm assuming that um, obviously with the property partners or um, anybody who is allotted a tree that that person or entity takes on the responsibility of maintenance and the applicant um, would actually manage that relationship for accessibility, et cetera. Uh, just looking out, I'm, I'm assuming for the longevity of the trees. Um, so that's, that's what I'm assuming is that, that there we enter an agreement with um, our property partners that they understand that long-term care and maintenance is part of this agreement and that on occasion, the applicant organization will also check on the trees to make sure that that is being maintained. Is that about right? That's correct, Mona. Um, our agreement with uh, the applicant that's applying to implement this program will be 10 years. And so um, we'll be looking at the trees to, uh, and the vegetative uh, barriers to make sure that um, they're maintained over 10 years. So that would require you as an applicant to work with the sub-applicants over the 10 years. Okay, and our experience is, because that does require a pretty good level of funding for that. So um, I would imagine that there would, 
I would surmise that there would be, it, it would very much have to be uh, to, you know, if a tree had to be replaced, especially with a vegetative barrier, then that funding would need to come from the, you know, uh, the, the, the person who manages that property at the, you know, at the applicant working with them, but the, it, it does, you know, there's considerable amount of effort that goes into main maintenance and care of trees. So I assume that there will be a certain level of understanding and flexibility as long as the agreements are in place and uh, perhaps like, you know, quarterly or, you know, uh, biannual, you know, review of these, but um, it's, it's not because uh, often there's not enough funding set aside for tree care and maintenance. So that's, uh, it's, it's important to understand that, um, that sometimes that this can go into a very expensive area of, of the process of, of keeping trees alive. Definitely, and uh, we do recognize uh, your concern with that, uh, with the budget. That's one of the reasons why uh, we're taking, we're asking uh, for a breakdown of the budget as part of the application so that we can review that with the, uh, CSC, as well as work with the applicant uh, to make sure that we can meet our goals. So are we able to keep, um, so if we create a budget that includes uh, long-term maintenance and care for 10 years, are we able to keep a budget outside of the planting period, you know, that initial implementation period, keep that funding for, to utilize over, the, you know, the, the remaining seven years or more? For the contract period, um, it does um, ask that the applicant arrange and budget for the maintenance of the project as well. So uh, that is something that we'll, we'll be looking into with the applicant. Okay, thank you. Um, just one second. We had a question uh, to kind of to look over the map of the area. So I would like to uh, quickly uh, switch my screens and then I will show you um, what we are looking at. So this is the AB 617 boundaries. It's in our RFP on the on page 51. But um, basically, uh, you can see here is McKinley Avenue. Um, and all the way down here is American Avenue. Um, there is kind of uh, different borders here. But you can um, on our RFP, you'll see clearly um, the uh, the boundaries. So the, the, we're looking for projects within these, this area. So um, and maybe if Stephanie, if you don't, I think you already did, but thank you. We do have a, another web link you can use uh, for further mapping tools. But I uh, want to make sure I got that question answered. So, um, was there any other questions? Hi, um, Mary Church with the City of Fresno. I did have a question, or maybe I just need some clarification. So I saw that we have the trees that we can give to individuals, and then planting trees in public spaces. Are we allowed to apply for either of those or do they have to have components of both in our project? Uh, based on the application, you can apply for both, but I take it, um, it may have to be separate applications uh, where you would, um, because the information I take it for the, the individual trees, um, the information for the project implementation plan would be different uh, from the public space, so. Okay, but if we're just looking at planting trees in a public space, that's that's fine. That's eligible, an eligible expense that we can apply for. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Was there any more questions? Um, well, you know, um, we will be doing another meeting at five, just in case for those who do not, who are, who are unable to attend. Um, but, um, you know, we want to let everyone know that uh, we really do um, appreciate your time and we're really looking forward to seeing if you are applying for these, for this program, we're, we're really excited to get these trees planted. Um, I can, I can tell you that the community is also very excited about this. Um, so, um, you know, I, we'll go ahead and stay on for a couple more minutes, just in case, but, um, you know, we do appreciate everyone's time uh, joining our meeting, but, um, you know, if, if there's any other, meeting, uh, any other questions, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, yeah, let me know if you have any other, anything else. Hey, David, I have a question about irrigation um, for the trees. Sure. Um, and 
uh, for, forgive me for not having looked at the detail because I'm confusing some um, applications. It's typical that there's designated irrigation required for the trees, uh, even working with homeowners. Mm -hmm. um, is that the case for this project, for working with individual homeowners? Um, would we lead them, you know, our, our practice is always to, you know, to encourage irrigation and to, but is that a requirement for uh, when we're working with individual homeowners that they install some form of designated irrigation for the trees? I mean, it's not a requirement. So. Okay. We do want to make sure we're, we're hoping that um, obviously the goal of this is to have trees that are long standing so, and, mm -hmm. and healthy for the, for the term. So, but the calculator but, will ask for some irrigation information uh, to help with that uh, portion of it. Um, okay. But it does not hurt. Really Thank you. And I did have one more question. I'm sorry. Um, do you say that we can apply for up to 1 million or is there just 1 million total in funding available? It there is, is up, sorry, go ahead, Catherine. <laughs> it, it is up to a million. So we have a million uh, available. Um, so we'll, we'll be taking a look at all of the applications. Okay, so 1 million is not the cutoff per application. That's the total funding available. It, correct. Okay. Is there any other questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. No, our, our pleasure. Okay. Well, I think uh, if there's no more questions, we'll go ahead and end this meeting. Um, I do want to say thank you to everybody for making time uh, to attend this meeting. We, we do appreciate it and we look forward to uh, all the potential applications and of course these projects. So, with that, I want to wish you uh, very well and thank you. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.